Hey, welcome back to another day, another vlog. Great to have you back on this Monday, the 27th. 27th, big week, fair bit happening this week. So you're gonna get through this, try and get through it today fairly quickly. Not a big tech release day, um, but yeah, hope your weekend Hope your weekend went well and you had a little bit of rest, caught up. Some big changes for COVID-19 in WA, uh, a lens release from Sam Yang, and some other Apple stuff and bits and pieces. Rightio, so obviously I don't work much on the weekends. I have, a, I have the break now, so that's pretty good. Um, I have decided to go back to work early, uh, obviously because we can't sell the house. Uh, that's just been a total disaster. All the money we've put into getting it ready for that's just been a bit of a write-off. Hopefully around September we're thinking we can sell, put it back, basically put it back on the market because the whole of house sales in WA have pretty much stopped. Zero interest from anyone whatsoever. So it's not good in that regard. So my parental leave finishes on the 13th, so I'm gonna fly back to work on the 12th so I don't waste any holidays because I'm gonna need it once to sell this house uh, or once we can actually sell the house, once people start buying houses again. Hopefully, maybe September onwards. So it's sort of stuffed up completely every plan we had. It's been a bit of a, no bit of a nightmare. It's, I mean, it's, it's not as bad as some people. People lost jobs and all that, but just to let you know sort of what we were, because we were, I was hoping to do like the round of Australia trip and spend the next couple of months driving around and videos and all sorts. It's unfortunate, I'm not gonna be able to do all that. Um, that's life. There's worse things we've, I've had to deal with in life and that's not the bit worst, definitely. Um, but other than that, uh, so we're going back to work. So I've got about a week, week and a bit, two weeks, I guess, two weeks to go. Before that, I'll be back to my normal work program. So I'm probably gonna keep just the Monday to Fridays for the show, for the daily show, and have the weekends off. Um, that'll allow me to have, I guess, a bit of sleep too while I'm at work, when I'm doing stuff. Work's changed a fair bit. There's a lot happening there in regards to this, uh, and that may change week by week as well when I get closer. Today in W, uh, well, before I get into that, uh, Photos are going well, got them all in. I uh, spent a fair bit, I had about a 20 shot focus stack of the Swan Tunnel, which is basically all in pitch black. Uh, it's this beautiful old tunnel, about 100 years old, and I focus stack with some light and bits and pieces to try and get some detail going back to the opening of the tunnel. And I had I played around with that for a while, whether to do it in Lightroom as a HDR, which worked out not too bad, putting, it all, putting all those images together. Um, it was actually a, an option I hadn't tried before. I, knew, I planned as a focus stack, but in HDR it turned up not too bad. In Photoshop I had to do a lot of cleaning up. There's photos there that just didn't align properly when I aligned them um, in bits and pieces. And I did stuff around for a good two to three hours just on one photo, just getting that to base standard. So, the photos are going well, there's a fair bit in there. There's, I think there's 188 photos from that day, so I've got to go through a fair bit. So I'll be doing a lot of work tonight on those, but it's progressing well. Um, that, that photo in the tunnel was probably one of my ones I really wanted to work, and it's come up pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out at the moment. Uh, but yeah, still work in progress, but yeah, new video's going really well, uh, we'll get there. Well, yeah, we'll go straight into COVID. We'll get that done and dusted. Now, WA, as of today, uh, reduce, slightly reduced the restrictions. Basically, all it's done is now you can have group gatherings of up to 10 people. So it's gone from two people, one-on-ones, uh, up to 10. Everything else is as per normal. Um, you still can't use exercise equipment, stuff like that. But basically, if you haven't caught up with your family or your friends for the last six, seven, eight weeks, you now can maybe catch up and have a dinner and just sort of get some human interaction, I guess, instead of not behind a phone screen. So it's, I guess it's sort of good meant, from a mental perspective, it's really good. Um, from a COVID perspective, it's, I think people concerned that we'll open up too early. Now they, on the back of that, there is the new COVID Safe app. I am, I was trying to 
uh, get into it. I only just heard about it uh, today or yes, last night through a mate on Facebook because um, I don't watch normal television or listen to the radio very much. So the first I'd heard of it was on Facebook. Um, so I tried to enter it today, but it just keeps bogging down when I put my phone number in to get some PIN number. So I'm assuming it's just getting smashed. They said uh, on the vid on YouTube today, they've had over a million people sign up for it. So I'm, I'm assuming either the, the apps, that sign up app has just crashed because of too much people trying to get on there, which is a good thing. And I'll just wait and just try again in a couple of hours and keep going and do it. It's, uh, it's from all um, understandings, it seems pretty safe. And the only data it basically records is your location and the people around you and it keeps it there for 21 days. It doesn't record any personal information, so it just keeps it 21 days. So for instance, I've got it, I get tested and I've got COVID-19, then they can basically go through using that app where I've, they can track where I've been and who I've been next to, so they can get them those people checked to make sure they, they don't have it or to basically track and isolate, uh, which is a good thing. Um, it, it doesn't give you any data, you can use dodgy names or whatever you want to do, but it's it seems pretty safe and the people I've talked to and the information I've watched in the videos, it all looks pretty legit. So it's a good thing to do. If you haven't done it already, definitely get onto it. Uh, it's a good idea and it's gonna help out, I guess, keeping it at these low levels, which is what we want, so that's good. So yeah, it's good. Uh, family, you can catch up with your family and friends if you, if you need to see someone, that's good. Uh, obviously, still minimize it as much as you can. The better off, the more you can, the better. Uh, but obviously, for a mental side of thing, there's a lot of people that are, are not used to being isolated, like us minus, that's how we live our life. We're constantly isolated, so it's a little bit easier for us to, to understand this part. Um, but yeah, so just, just be aware, you can do it. It's only 10, so it's not a rave party, uh, but you can at least, I guess, catch up with people that you're, you're missing or you need to see like mum and or mum and dad or brother and sister or kids or whatever. So that's pretty cool. On the bad side of the COVID inf news today, uh, Chinese have threatened Australia. Uh, if we don't back off the inquiry over COVID-19, the Australian government's obviously put an inquiry through to get um, some information on how this all started through China. And Chinese government on how to be saying that this could affect, I guess in, in the nicest words, this could affect people choosing to come here to be educated or come here for holidays and, and you know, bullshit stuff like that, which is pretty piss poor. Uh, if they want to start pulling that shit, I'm like, really, just go. Like, no one really cares anymore. If they're that going to be play petty games, do we really want them coming here? Like, if they want, they can stay home in China in the smog central uh, instead of coming to see this beautiful country. There's uh, plenty of other people in this, on this beautiful planet that want to come and visit Australia and all its wonders. Uh, if the Chinese are going to use bullying tactics to try and get us to... Not ask simple, reasonable questions. Well, then I think that's a bit rude and yeah, jam it up on uh, government. I uh, hope they actually just keep fighting them. It sounds like they are not going to back off, so that's good. Uh, I'd hate to see them just fold just because of political pressure from them. So that's a good thing. And they shouldn't have any right to try and pull that bullshit. So um, yeah, tell them to stick it. Um, radio now Sam Yang. Uh, New, new lens out from those guys. Uh, it's for, I think it's for the Sony. It's for the, I'm pretty sure it's for the Sony ones. Uh, it's a 75mm f1.8 FE automatic focus lens. It's a tiny little lens. It's only 230 grams in weight. I'm actually I'm sure it's only for the Sony. I didn't check if it's for the Canon and any others as well, but I, I think it's for uh, Micro Four Thirds and Sony, it may be. Uh, 230 grams, so that's a tiny little lens for a 75 mil. 69 milli millimeters high, so it's only that high with a really nice bokeh in it. Uh, if you go to their website and check it out, really, really nice. Also, it's got a custom switch, which allows the user to adjust aperture with the focus ring. So instead of just, I guess, on my M50, it's up here, it's a little dial depending on what camera and what brand you are, um, to maybe being able to adjust that 
thing. It's maybe a finer or a finer adjustment of that aperture. I'm not quite sure, but again, it's a little, little funky feature in there and pretty cool. Sanyang does some great glass. Um, they're, they're pretty, uh, I guess, underknown, or I'm not sure what the right word is there, but uh, they're for the cost, cost per quality, it's a good value of, of option for you to go check out. And a 75 mil if you need a good portrait, and that's realistically what it is. It's a, it's a really good portrait lens. Uh, I'm sure this will be a fantastic option to check out. They do, I think Samsung in the States, they don't call it, there's a different name, it's, it's, it comes under Rokinen, but basically Rokinen lenses are Samsung lenses. Sam Yang or Sam Yang lenses are the actual parent company and Rokinen is just a different brand name to get past whatever other brands are in that country. So yeah, if you've heard of Rokinen or, well then that's actually a Sam Yang and yeah, definitely go check this out. Very good lens. Right, over on the Apple side, there's a little bit of news. Uh, lastly, but not least, um, we've got the Apple AirPods Pro 2. Uh, should be released next month with a new MacBook. Now, they're saying it might be the MacBook 12-inch. I'm not quite sure. But, uh, now it's, sorry, my camera connect keeps dropping out, uh, which is a pain cannon useless app sometimes it's very very finicky um, the apple airpods pro 2 should be released next month with a macbook that's what the current rumors are stating so early may we should get a release for the new pro headphones um, and this new macbook they're saying if it is the 12 inch i think that's probably ideal um, because then we'll go 12 14 16 which is, I think, realistically where they've got to be going. It'd be crazy to have a 12, a 13, and then a 16. It just makes no sense. Um, ideally, it'd be good if they went a 12, the 14, the 16, and then introduced an 18 at some stage. Get that real big screen in there. Um, that would be pretty cool. That would, I would actually, as much as the 16 inch cost a fortune, an 18 inch to have that extra screen room when you're editing the stuff and use, because I don't really have a desktop at home to come home to, I live off my computer because I'm traveling, uh, to have a bigger screen space, the weight really is an issue, uh, so that'd be perfect. But anyway, so hopefully that's next month. Uh, now Beats, if you, everyone in the world should be familiar with Beats, uh, Dr. Dre and, uh, what's his name, Irvine created them. Now they bought out by Apple for ridiculous like three or four billion dollars a few years ago. Now Apple's taken them and had it as a sister company and that that's going to basically all be absorbed in the next 12 to 24 months by Apple. Uh, Apple will basically bring it out and it's going to be they're basically like a sport line for their headphones. So it'd be still over ear headphones as such but that Beats name will pretty much disappear, it'll become Apple and it'll be a sports range. They're talking about interchangeable pads so you get different types of pads, colors, all that sort of stuff. Sort of a, uh, like a fashion statement type headphone so it's a, adaptable and changeable uh, to suit you. So that'll be pretty cool. And that's all gonna then, that's when the Beats name will pretty much disappear from existence. Um, so that'll be, I guess, a sad day, I guess, from Dr. Dre and Irvine, that will be a sad day. They built an amazing company and the headphones are great. I've had, I think, two sets, one set, two sets of them, and both were really good. So great products and they did a great job to start with. And Apple's continued that on and now because Apple's just so big and got so much going on, uh, obviously it's easier just to have that one company and use that technology and absorb it all into their structure. So very cool and a lot happening there. Uh, now they did also talk about delays and stuff with phones and bits and pieces, but nothing really new. We know there's gonna be delays. Uh, they did say the basically the biggest phone, whatever the hell that's gonna be called, um, that's the 6.7 inch, that's gonna be um, delayed and not start producing till October. Um, what's going on here? Sorry, um, now I've got iPad issues. Don't know what's going on at the moment. It's a bit crazy. Wow. Nothing wants to work today. Technology. 
<laughs> but yeah, so there's there's a lot happening in, in the iPhone department. We're still going to get some 5Gs. There was rumors that they were going to split up between the like broadband base, base style and then the millimeter waves and maybe split them up as two separate styles of 5G. Maybe bring the broadband, that base one, in this year's phones and then 2021 bring in the millimeter wave phones or millimeter waves uh, set up and that's the one that gets a 1500 megabytes a second speeds but still that broadband one was still 300 megabytes when uh, mkbh tested in la so mate, if we got that we, we couldn't even get that in australia anyway no matter what they bring out it'll still be slow and with australia's technology um so yeah very very interesting and a lot happening in that space but nothing locked in or nothing really it's too far away to really talk about but uh, we do have some releases coming out apple now tomorrow 28th don't forget the dji should drop we all know what it's going to be the mavic air 2 um we get it confirm all those specs we talked about last week that should be tomorrow so be aware of that's coming out I think we've also got some other releases later this week as well. I can't remember what they were, but I'm, I know there's a fair bit happening. So stay tuned, and I will keep you up to date as best I can. Okie doke. Radio. hope you all had a good weekend. And I will see you all again tomorrow. So thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. Another day, another vlog. Cruising along well past the 250 mark. If you're going that way, that way, I will see you all again tomorrow. Stay safe. Peace.